When people think of Let's Plays, fighting games aren't exactly the first genre that come to mind. Yet for years now, Wooly Madden has been using the format to introduce his audience to everything the genre has to offer. While in town filming for Fight On, I got a chance to talk with Wooly about his origins, his time with the Super Best Friends, and his work getting others into fighting games. I got into gaming as most kids did. I think I, I got that Nintendo for Christmas, I got that Super Nintendo. Fighting games in particular came into my life uh, when we had about nine kids between my brother, cousins, and all the little rugrats in my family, all living in the same house, running around, being loud. We all had to play t like on the system together. And if we went to go rent a game, it was not gonna be Final Fantasy, and it was not gonna be Chrono Trigger, because those games are amazing, but you can't play that with a bunch of kids. Everyone's yelling and screaming, everyone wants to play. What's the best way to, to shut like nine kids up at the same time is you make them play a game that takes about a minute per match and they always pass the controller on and everybody gets to rotate, you know? Like this was the ultimate way to deal with a whole lot of people that wanted to play at the same time. Fighting games are amazing for that. So Street Fighter 2 and everything that came afterwards were the, the de facto game of the house every Sunday. we get together and play because it was just the way to shut us all up and have us you know sit quietly and play a game together you know montreal is a it's a french place but it's it's bilingual there's english everywhere but there's a lot of kids that don't speak one or the other right i was like mainly anglophone uh i'm bilingual now but for a long time, because I just grew up surrounded by English and that was my only understanding, I was really bad at French. Meanwhile, I had friends that were only French speakers. They were only Francophone, but like, we'd play the game. You know what I mean? Like, that was the language we'd share. Like, you just, you'd eventually like, be able to figure out word, the words in tech in some ways together. You'd, you'd describe things. And I got better hanging out with some of these guys, these kids that I otherwise wouldn't hang out with because they were all French, you know? Yeah, it was, it was pretty much just a crossover between all the different cultures and hangouts, like all the different kids of the neighborhood, you know, like we had like the, the Cambodian crew and the Haitian kids and then like the black kids and then some of the white French white kids and stuff. And like, and it was just, everyone would just come together, pop their quarter in and try to beat the best. Before he was a fixture on the Super Best Friends channel, Wooly guested on earlier videos with fellow SBF member Matt on features such as Fighterpedia. How did this all come about and how did it wind up creating this dude? Fighting games almost held me back from getting into it, to be honest, because fighting games require all of your time and attention. When you want to stay up to date, you just have to keep keep with it. You have to stay afloat. You have to know what's going on. When Matt first got in touch with me and uh, we started filming bits and like just dumb little things together. He, he had a, sh uh, a channel, right? He had the switcher. There was already these like Street Fighter stupidity videos, right? Because we would always laugh about these old Street Fighter cartoons and go back and like, find hilarious moments in those episodes and like he would cut, cut together these compilations and it was it was great uh, you've gotten sloppy and weak you would never have fallen for that move before look at you you've ignored your training and you've turned against all of your friends and you you're a loser then there were some really early just dumb ideas that we would come up with when we were testing video games together we come up with like, what if every game had a rolling start like Daytona USA? So we made a video called Rolling Starts where you get to see like the nuke go off in Call of Duty or like what if you started FF7 and the first thing was Sephiroth dropping from the sky as the rolling star, you know, it was, just, it was a goofy dumb video, but like what if every game had that? And we just made that as a, a little thing. And uh, you know, it got some views back when Game Trailers was a, a, a big website. We made Izuna Drops, which is like ranking Izuna Drops in all games, like from one to a million or whatever. And we just freaked out, just wanted to show off how awesome this ninja grab is in every different incarnation we've seen it in. And uh, there are, yeah, like two or three other little like skit things like that before we eventually got started on Fighterpedia. Because Matt and I, again, we just had fighting games in common as a history, you know? So like through Fighterpedia, we got used to working together and like kind of just putting like, inside jokes that we had into the outside world and hoping that they would land. And thankfully they did because there's other people out there that get it. Second best stage goes to Darkstalkers, fetus of God. Holy fuck. Second worst stage goes to Darkstalkers, fetus of God. Holy fuck. A show that I kind of 
had before Fighterpedia is this like very quiet, no one talks about, it doesn't exist online anymore, a show called Needs More Salt that I, I, I tried to get going. It was not very good. I had no confidence in anything I was saying and it was terrible, but it was very like visual heavy, you know, and it would group, gra- I'd grab like lots of bits and pieces and things. So like in order to grab lots of bits and pieces of like just images to use and that and whatever, uh, I had like a massive folder of just random fighting game related art, clips, whatever you call it, you know? And one thing I had was all the old rejected Street Fighter character designs, you know, and it had like scans from the art book. So like this folder I just remember was always sitting there that I had when I, and I just stare at like some of the weirdest character designs on this thing. And I remember uh, one day talking to Matt about all the goofy ass shit that Capcom never put into Street Fighter 2, including like the original Blanca, who's this slave guy with a chain in his mouth. And it was just like, oh my God, what are they thinking? For some reason, when we got to the bullfighter, there was all these international wild, like like Ganesha, Dalsim, and you know, all this crazy shit. But like, this was just this weird out of place dude. But he was just a dude with a beard and a ripped shirt. He looked like he belonged in a dive bar. What is the point of this guy? Like, how is that a street fighter? It had nothing going on, you know? It was like one of the worst designed characters I'd ever seen. And um, yeah, we just like, yucked up what his potential story would be like why would this guy you know be in the pantheon of like sagat bison ryu these great characters and then like this this dude with a soup catcher beard a ripped gym shirt with the word zubaz you know so we're just like building it up and like one of the coolest quotes we would always talk uh, uh, joke with each other with at the time was about how um in the in the beginning of fatal fury terry bogard would go Feel the storm, it's coming. It'd just be hilarious to drop it when it's inappropriate. So using it here, can you feel the storm, it's coming for this real, really dumb character with Zubaz. Like, it just, we fu- we fell apart. We fucking died. Now this guy is so cash. Here we've got rope whips, leather straps, spiked wrist guards, a soup catcher beard, and a ripped gym shirt with the word Zubaz. Zubaz. And like, we didn't know anything about like the Zubaz brand of clothing that was associated with wrestlers. We had no idea that he was meant to be a reference to the Legion of Doom. So we put him in. It was the funniest part of the entire episode to us. And when we started doing, when we did the next episode, I was just like, yo, what if I just, just stick him in the background somewhere and get this going, you know? And then come the third episode, I'm like, okay, yep, I see how this franchise is going to go. We're going to create the franchise here and now that is Zubaz, and he's going to be in every episode of this show, whether you notice it or not. From there, it was just like, okay, we have this character, now we're going to play Let's Plays, we're going to play wrestling games, who do we create a character with? It better fucking be the Baz, right? And then eventually, when Kickstarter popped off, the whole making a create a character of Zubaz thing just naturally extended into insert a character into this game. We want to promote the game. We want people to support it. We want everyone to know that Shovel Knight looks awesome. What can we do? Well, if you can put a character in, let's put our dumb guy in there. Same thing for Dive Kick. Switch the to The Baz because Zubaz clothing is a real corporate brand. We don't want to get involved in that. This character is, I guess, technically from Capcom, but has kind of morphed into something else at this point. They did include the page include uh, amongst all the other rejected characters on the anniversary collection, right? It is there, but no one's ever reached out to say anything. It's, it's, it's just what it is. A doodle on a napkin that got scanned into an art book of a, of a forgotten embarrassing memory, you know? Like, that's all it is. And at this point, it's taken on a life of his own. He's in games I don't even know about. He's gotten cameos and things I haven't played you know what I mean? Like, I saw, I saw a racing game where they just threw him in there. I saw him in, like, another little, like, 3D platformer. Like, it's it's exactly what I want. I just want this to be almost like a publicly used, open source piece of garbage character, you know, uh, at this point. Because anytime anyone goes, hey, can I put him in? Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't even think twice. Put him in your game. Have fun. <laughs> the wins. 
At the moment, fighting game content comes in many different forms. Match footage, interviews, and analysis videos to name a few. And for years, Friday nights on the Super Best Friends channel were for fisticuffs. Every week, the crew would gather to showcase a fighting game of their choosing. Whether it was a revered game like Third Strike, or maybe even something like Jackie Chan's Fist of Fire, the genre was on full display. What were the motivations in creating a weekly fighting game show? As the channel continued to grow, and I saw things picking up in the audience, like really starting to build and build, like I always had like the agenda of like push fighting games. One of the ways we met was just hanging out in college playing fighting games together. Like, you know, we'd skip class and just, you know, someone would bring a console, someone else would bring the games and sticks or controllers, and we'd just find the screen and like plug in and play, you know, whenever we weren't like doing anything else. And like, just that like chill afternoon of playing fighting games and having fun was always a good time. And after Fighterpedia ended, like I started a show with Matt called Scrub Lords, where we just continued to do sets with each other in the worst games we could find. You know, like we just kind of like kept it going. But the point was is that like, I'm like, I want to keep pushing fighting games. I don't want to be just, Fighterpedia is done, but I, I want to do more. I want people to get into them and I want this audience, especially that we're building, you know, a lot of them are, are survival horror fans. A lot of them are RPG fans. A lot of the people that came are not from the place that like my interests came from, you know? So like trying to evangelize it as much as possible, you know, I'm just like, I, I, I want to show fighting games more. So when there was nothing going on after Scrub Lords, I was like, why don't we put together a weekly show, right? And that'll not only that, but it'll be like a consistent thing that we can do on the channel that like will recapture that feeling of going to hang out in, at college and playing those fighting games, you know? We'd have like those evenings of just like, yeah, man, get some drinks, you know, get some friends together and, and play. Hey, what's going on, man? Come on in. You ready to play? I didn't realize that like so many people had that exact experience. Like I was basically trying to recreate the way we all met and hung out. And in doing that, it turns out like tons of people had similar hangouts and everyone just kind of loved that vibe. People that weren't necessarily interested in the fighting game were still interested in that sort of hangout. And like it thankfully kind of got them to stick around. And before they knew it, they were like, oh, these games are pretty dope. But it could have been any other... You can play Magic the Gathering on a Friday night with your friends, you know what I mean? Like, it can go a bunch of different ways, but, like, this two-for-one kind of combined, you know, people's, like, desire to sort of just, like, have that chill hangout environment, and uh, it got me to have a bunch of different awesome fighting games that, like, I knew people didn't know about in the spotlight on the channel, while every week they'd be paying attention to, like, the latest episode of Silent Hill, but Friday night, check it out, it's Mark of the Wolves. you never seen this game? It's awesome. Check out how beautiful the sprites are. Yeah, Terry Bogard, he, dro he dropped his hat. He put on a new jacket. Did you know about this? It's fucking sick. Like that's just pushing that out into everyone's faces. And like, yeah, it, it worked. How hard is it to teach a fighting game in 30 minutes? Impossible. It's impossible. And I learned early in that series that like the educational side of things is not the part that people are necessarily signing up for. They're kind of just here for the fun right? And I'm like, okay, if I'm trying to teach, that's bad. Especially with these guys that are just fucking clowning around, like, we're all just trying to have fun, so that's not necessarily the point. But showing off every character a little bit should be a part of it. We want to make sure you see what's going on in the game and what it has to offer. Trying to, like, play legit was also a huge mistake, because uh, what, it ended up ha what ended up happening is, like, a lot of people just, I got a lot of shit over, like, being a tryhard is essentially what it was. Playing the way that I'd always learned how to play these games, which is you play your main, you play serious, you play to win, you know, type of thing. And it was like, oh, well, he's that guy that's ruining the hangout, right? Because back in my days at the college, there was a guy that would come and he'd take it way too seriously and it wouldn't be fun, you know? So, like, simultaneous to the inception of the series came the reminder of that guy that would make the night not fun, you know? And I didn't want to be that or do that, right? All that to say that eventually I kind of said, okay, let's just not only 
get rid of like a lot of that. Let's just go through the roster, pick who we, who we, we haven't seen yet. And consciously, I made an effort in my brain to just press buttons, just stick around. Doesn't matter what's happening. Have fun with it, right? Don't try to play if you, you know what I mean? The core point was it's a hangout. So just knock on my door, come on in, you know, grab your stick, you ready to play, right? Like that's it. And anything that strays too far from that is gonna not be well received. The Super Best Friends disbanded in December 2018. And since then, Wooly has continued with Let's Plays on his own channel, Wooly Versus. With the shift to a more streaming focused approach, it's allowed Wooly to further experiment and embellish his efforts to promote fighting games. I was hanging out with guys in particular, like when I was playing with Matt and Pat and Liam, the hangout there was with people that like, weren't particularly interested in like getting better at fighting games. They just wanted to dick around, play them and have some fun. And, and that's totally what it should be about. And I kind of just like, I felt like, well, if I'm doing like another new thing now, and it's a stream, there's more time than just a half hour or one hour, right? We have a whole night looking at a game. You can get that chill vibe while also going into some detail. You can also get that fun sort of like uh, 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 experience of just like the Friday nights together, but because we have much more time, we can actually use that one stream to pick up a character, see their basic tech, and then how to apply it, you know? Like it's a live demonstration of like beginning a fighting game for the first time or touching a, a, a character for the first time and then showing you that like, oh, these two, three things I learned in a training mode session, I can now fight against people online with, you know? It's like walking you through those first couple steps. And like, even though some of the people who were not interested in, in learning kind of like tune out from that, the tons of people that would write in and, and send me messages about like wanting to learn more or about being interested in fighting games or getting back into them, uh, but not being sure where to start, not being sure how to approach, not being sure how to get past that first couple steps of just picking someone and dying forever online. There was a large number of people that were like, yo, I need help. Like, I don't know where to go. I'm interested. I think this is really cool, but I don't know what comes next. And I'm not getting a ton of clear instructions from the game. So what do I do? So I kind of like looked at it and I'm like, like, okay, there's gonna be some people that are not gonna wanna stick around for this, but there's clearly already people here who are here for it. And these people can grow and become a part of the FGC and help usher in this new age and like, you know, carry it to the future if they are encouraged to stick around. And for a long time, fighting games have had a bit of a like exclusionary reputation, you know? So it's like, let's walk that back. Let's change that. Instead of trying to like rope everybody in and be like, no, wait, don't go. I was kind of like, well, hey, the people that are still around, like you want to learn some stuff? right? I can make you guys more into it than you were before. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> do it again. Do it again. Come do on. it again. Do it again. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Tighten up. Tighten up. Put him up. Put him up. Uh, Put him up. Uh, Put him up. Uh, Put him up. Uh, Put him up. The lifeblood of the community is the players. So like growing that is much more important than like getting in people that are here to like spectate a little bit, have some fun and then peace out. Not that anything's wrong with that, but I just, I just, to me, I'm like, what helps the community more would be this approach. And then we can definitely edit that for fun to a nice little video that I throw up later and we just get all the highlights in there and kind of like also have an excuse to play with some fans online. It was an all in one sort of thing that, uh, carries over the idea that I've always tried to push of just like get into fighting games like it's a bit intimidating you know it's a bit scary there's a lot of unknowns sometimes the game will hold your hand but a lot of the times it won't sometimes people will just beat your ass so you don't know why or what happened or how to improve but like there's so much fun and like joy to be had on the other side of like the stuff that you're hesitant about and if I can just run a stream every once in a while and help some people ease through that really confusing part of things, then I'm hoping that they will continue to play these games on their own, go to their locals, support their scenes, do all of that. And then in the end, more fighting games will come out and that they won't die again. So it's all really selfish because I want fighting games to keep coming out. So 
that's all it comes down to. Grow the scene, get people playing, the genre gets bigger, they make more of them, I get cool fighting games. Win, win, win all around. I feel like it's working because every time I go to tournaments, every time I go to FGC events, most of what I would hear is, hey, what's up, dude, thanks for making it out, right? That slowly became, yo, dude, you got me in, this is my first tournament, right? That, the new player that came out to the event like started to massively outnumber the people that were like, oh, I've been here the whole time. It's cool that you're into fighting games too. What's up, man? That means that there's new, new players here that are coming in from this stuff. They're telling me, you know, and like, it's with a much more increased frequency at every event we're going to, you know what I mean? So like, that's super working well. And I'm like, like over the moon with that like that's the best these people are gonna like potentially stick around you know or in some cases go on to like be top eight at evo you know like when i'm catching like t-swag he's like oh yeah dude love love best friend stuff i'm just like you're a fucking killer instinct god what <laughs> you know what i mean like names of players that i've seen and like like reaching like the the top that are just like yeah i watched your dumb stuff got into it from there really 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 dug it and spent my time getting better and now i'm one of the best like incredible you know that stuff like legitimately keeps the games alive affects how the games are like made affects characters affects the meta putting more people in and having some of those people like become people that like define the game in a way and reach out to others like will 100 percent then influence a decision for a sequel or a decision for a world tour or something like that and that's the best. That's the absolute best because anything is better than the dark years between 2002 and 2008. You're spoiled for choice, right? You're spoiled for choice for what games to play right now. When I go to events, I'm signing up for multiple games I don't, I don't enter. And that's a crazy thought from a couple years ago when there was no choice. That to me means a lot, all of this is working. If I can contribute even slightly to that, you know, if I can do a fraction of what Max does for the fighting game community, holy shit, I'll take it. And yeah, it's the best feeling ever. It's why I do this. It's, it's the motivating drive. Hey, what's going on, man? Come on in. You ready to play? Thanks for watching our talk with Wooly. Our videos are 100% funded by our patrons, including these guys, and our special contributor, Radiance. If you like what we do and want to help us make more, consider becoming a patron today at patreon.com slash holdbacktheblock. Until next time.